Good morning, good people. Welcome to class. This is Mr. Fields. I'm gonna go over a couple of things from yesterday's video and also give you a bit more to think about today. The goal of this video is to be shorter than the vid video from yesterday though, okay? So first things first, let's start with our introduction to poetry. We are gonna be going over poetry, poetry one more time and I wanna make sure that we have everything that we need to understand. So I am going to share my screen. I'm gonna show you first in Class Dojo, if you go to the message from yesterday, this is from April 19th, you'll see all of these wonderful words. This here is the link to yesterday's Talk Time Episode 3. All right, so I want you to click there. The link below, the common lit, that is your assignment for this week, all right? So click here, and then YouTube will pop up, and you will get this guy with a hat on, talking and reading and things. I'm not gonna good listen. Good morning, good people. As you already oh, know. Mr. Fields I love, here, talk, talk. Yay. I love the morning, that's why I'm always saying good morning, even if you're watching this in the afternoon. So this is the video. I wanna make sure that you watch it all the way through first. All right, I talk a little bit about um, things that are happening in my life as well. So it's not all teaching, teaching, it's more review. And now today will be the teaching after you have listened to that, okay? So that's talk time. We're gonna start at 11.50 because that's where we intro uh, poetry. That's where I intro poetry, let's listen. A quote here for you just to kind of get us back into poetry. What is poetry? And why has it been around so long? When you really feel it, a new part of you happens or an old part is renewed with surprise and delight at being what it is. All right, and this question is uh, posed to us by James Dickey. Let us think not just what is poetry, but what is poetry? What is rap? What are song lyrics? Okay, even what is a story? Why have these things been around so long? When you really feel them, a new part of you happens or an old part is renewed with surprise and delight at being what it is. All right. So that's where we're gonna start today. What is poetry? I want you to think about that. Also, it helps you to understand, hey, there I am, let me make it a little bigger. It also helps you to understand why I asked you to turn in lyrics to your favorite songs so we can go through and look for those poetic devices, cool? All right, next what we're gonna do, we're going to go to 349. Okay, and this is just reminding us of this wonderful thing here. I want you to pay special attention to our learning target for this week. Okay, let's go. For today. So for um, our learning target is I can determine a theme or central idea of a poem and how it is conveyed through particular details, especially figurative language. We're gonna focus on figurative language today. Our do now, what is figurative language? What is literal language? I'm gonna read some poems and hopefully you'll be able to find the, the two, um, the difference between the two, figurative language and literal language. And then let me just show this to you while we have it here. Our lesson, we're only gonna work, focus on four of our figurative languages, okay? Uh, four examples of figurative language. Metaphor, simile, extended metaphor, and personification. I hope you guys remember what those are. If you don't, I'm gonna make sure to give you definitions and share examples. And then the last part, now you try. Okay, excellent. Great. So again, if you need those definitions, they are available on the video yesterday. I'm going to move on and focus on what we're doing today. Today, we are determining the theme based on the figurative language, okay? So I can determine a theme or central idea of a poem and how it is conveyed through particular details, especially figurative language, all right? So we use the figurative language to support our idea of what the theme is. When we listen to these videos today, these um, poems today, I want you to think, okay, one, what figurative language is being used? Two, what is the theme of this poem? All right, let's remind ourselves for a second what theme is, all right? This is theme versus central idea. The theme is the message that a reader takes away from a story. It's what the writer is trying to say about life. All right, you see it's different from central idea. I want you to focus on theme though. I have that up there in case you need to pause it and read it for yourself, okay? Read the other side or reread theme. 
steps, think about the topic of the story. Next, decide how the events in the story change the character or how the events changed how the character felt about a topic. Next, consider if there was a lesson the character learned. Last, think of one or two words that describes the change that happened or the lesson. That is the theme, okay? So let's think about that as we go through these next few poems. I'm going to do three poems total, that's it. One poem is going to be part of a poem. Because again, I want this to be much shorter than yesterday. So the first poem starts at 5.33. All of this wonderful editing. Here we go. Today, I bought a book for you. Okay, I do not own the rights for this book. I support, I suggest you buy it if you like it. Um, even if you don't like it, support a brother. But I wanted to make sure that you guys understand what literal language and figurative language is. The last thing I'll say before I read this poem is a lot of time we get lost in the figurative language. There's so much figurative language that we don't know what happened in the actual story. Okay, the story of the poem. This one should be very easy to follow. It's very literal. Okay, so this stuff probably literally happened. Okay, today I bought a book for you. It wasn't one I had ever heard of. But the first page had your favorite word, and that was enough for me to unfold the dollar bills from my pocket. I remember the first time you told me what it meant. I wrote it down in my notebook with the hopes of using it later to impress you. I have a notebook full of these. It should come as no surprise I have always used words to try and convince the world that I am worth something. That's poem number one. What is the theme of that poem? Okay, now I want, I don't want to confuse you. There are a couple of levels that I want you to understand because of the lesson from yesterday and this lesson as well. The first lesson, it, the first layer is figurative language versus literal language. Literal language actually happened. Figurative language are the personification, the comparisons, those are similes and metaphors. And then an extended metaphor is if it happens over a couple of stanzas. So we're gonna use either literal language like this poem here or figurative language. Then we're going to determine what the theme is. So what is the theme of this, this poem? I want you to pause and answer, okay? Don't wait for me to tell you what the answer is. While you do that, I am going to go to our next poem. All right, so the theme of this poem is worth, okay? It's loving someone. It's wanting to impress someone. It's listening, you know? So I got all of these words, and if you picked one of these words or something similar, and you can point back to, hey, this is how I got it, then you got it correct. Okay, all right, so that is our first poem. This next poem, this is just a piece of it. The name of the poem is My Father is an Oyster. And at the beginning of the poem, they describe what an oyster is. Um, and then he also describes that he ate a lot of seafood growing up. While that's important to the poem, I want us to think about the theme. And the theme starts around here. He says that something, so an oyster makes its pearl because something that's hazardous to the oyster has come inside of it. And it covers it with this beautiful material to make it safe for the oyster. So there's something that happened with his father. He had uh, problems with his kidney and that he covered it with something beautiful. He covered it with calligraphy, with writing his son a letter actually. So we're gonna focus on the part of the poem where he's writing the son, writing his son the letter. The name of the poet is Clint Smith. And the name of the book is called Line Breaks. That's both of these first two poems. Let's listen. I have a quote here for you just to kind of get us back into poetry. What Wonderful. That is the quote that's getting us back into poetry. We're going to 927. Where's a shell hardened by growing up in a place where expectations never rose above low tide? He was raised by a coral reef of a mother who had the echo of an unborn ocean on her breath taught him that when the waves of this world try to wear you down, it's okay. We are all a little bit weathered. If an oyster can turn a parasite into a pearl, then it is no surprise that my father can turn a kidney into calligraphy. That means fancy writing. 
When I was 13 and he was first diagnosed, he wrote me a 15 page letter saying that if anything happened, I had to be ready to become the man of the house. Clint, though it hasn't always looked like it, I've always put God first. I know you complain because Clinton Ward Smith III makes it sound like you're the heir to a British monarchy, but never doubt you are a king. Understand that I gave you your grandfather's name because the most sacred things I have ever known come in trinities. Clint, I love you like I love your mother like a stained glass window in a war zone. She can be both shield and shard, both weapon and protection. Treat every woman like you would want a man to treat your sister. This ocean already has enough sharks. Clint, don't be another shark. My father is an oyster. He clamps down tightly on the things that he loves the most, his family and his God. He has a calcium encrusted heart cradled tightly in his chest, bears scars worn from the waves that have tried to erode him of this world. My father is an oyster. I pray that when he is pulled from this ocean, those who live above the surface see the brilliance of his pearls. Excellent. My father is an ocean. So now what I would like you to do is I would like you to think about the figurative language that is being used. If you want to rewind so you can make sure that you caught it, let me give you a couple of examples. One is coral reef. What is coral reef being uh, compared to? Next is window. What is the window being compared to? It's actually a stained glass window. And they, he talks about window a little bit, so that's cool. Um, the other two are ocean and sharks, okay? Ocean is actually an extended metaphor. Yes, I'm gonna give that one to you. It comes up again later throughout the poem, and this is just half of the poem. But what is ocean? What is ocean being compared to? And then what is a shark? being compared to. So I want you guys to figure this out on your own. I'm not going to give you the answers. And then I want you to ask yourself, what is the theme just of this section? And the theme of this section will be the theme of the entire poem. But what do you think the theme is, okay, of this poem? Let me show you this one more time. Theme is the message that a reader takes away from a story. It's what the writer is trying to say about life. The last thing that I want to show you guys for today is this poem. This is one of our, this is a found poem. Remember when we were reading Frederick Douglass and we created found poems? This is the example that was uh, shared with us. So I want you to read through it. I want you to note any figurative language and what is an, it an example of. And then I want you to say, hey, what is the theme of this, okay? Excellent. I hope that the figurative language also points your attention to a certain aspect of this theme, a certain memory that is really strong for Frederick Douglass. Since we've already read Frederick Douglass, this should come very easily. The name of this poem is Mother. She journeyed to see me in the night, immune to the weariness in her bones, while the moon illuminated her solitary walk. Lying beside me like embers, like stones slowly baked by the sun, like the blanket she wished she could be. Never by the light of day, whipping the penalty. But worse yet, even in death, she was a stranger to me. That distance her feet couldn't cross. Although led by her motherly heart, she tried. Okay, so I'm just going to point out that the bold words are words that were added. The non-bolden words, she journeyed to see me in the night and lying beside me, never by the light of day. Those words are from the actual uh, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass. So now I want you first to determine what is literally happening, okay? That should be easy and pretty quick. Next, figurative language. What figurative language is being used? Metaphor, extended metaphor, simile or personification all right and lastly what is the theme of this poem mother hope you guys have a great week let me know if you have any questions i'm available via dojo or via um, email all right all the best peace